Hey there, I'm Mike Rignetto. Welcome to the Salon This Is Mental Floss video. And did you know that William Shakespeare coined the term Olympian for athletes? The word first popped up in the play Troilus and Cressida, written around 1602. That is the first of many facts about Olympic history that I'm gonna tell you about today in honor of the Summer Olympics in Rio this year. <laughs> The ancient Greeks invented the Olympics. For them, it was a sporting event in honor of Zeus, which took place every four years between the 8th century BCE and the 4th century CE. The modern Olympics were revived in 1896. They're named after a place in Greece. Olympia. It's in the Peloponnese Peninsula where the Olympics used to take place. The first Olympic champion that we have on record was a cook named Corobus who won a 192 meter race in 776 BCE. There were plenty of Olympic events that happened in the years before that, but Corobus is the first winner that we know about. Another famous Olympic champion was Emperor Nero. In 67 BCE, he declared himself the winner of a chariot race that he definitely lost. And by lost, I mean he fell off of his chariot mid-race and was still decided the victor. It's good to be the king. Speaking of cheating, the first Olympic cheater is notorious too. In 388 BCE, Euphilus of Thessaly got publicly shamed after he bribed three boxers to lose. We don't know why he did it. Cheaters had to pay fines that were used to build individual statues of Zeus, which featured an explanation of what the cheater did and recognized the real winner. The statues were known as Zanes, and over the years, many of them were built around Olympia. Back then, all of the competitors were Naked. Even the coaches attended events naked. This meant that married women weren't allowed to attend at first. And interestingly, our word gymnastics comes from a Greek word meaning naked. The games in ancient Greece also led to a sacred truce. A month before the games, every four years, a truce was called throughout the city-states of Greece, which were often at war. That way people could go to the Olympics without traveling through war zones. Back then, the winners didn't receive medals for winning. They got a wreath of leaves. They also became local heroes when they went back home. The Olympics were eventually banned by Emperor Theodosius I in 393 CE. By this time, Greece was a Christian nation, so the Olympics weren't allowed because they were considered a pagan festival. They made their comeback in 1896 CE for a few reasons, including architectural discoveries that sparked interest, the addition of collegiate sports in England, and a newfound fascination with exercise. Another helpful factor was a French aristocrat named Pierre de Coubertin who took the project on and created the International Olympic Committee. Coubertin also designed the Olympic rings. He originally drew a version on a letter to a colleague and they were made the official symbol of the Olympics in 1914. They represent five continents and when they're on a white background, they also have colors of every country's flag. Back to the Olympic revival, the games took place in Athens, Greece in 1896. The total cost was about 450 $4,800,000 in today's money, and that is very cheap compared to how much it takes to host the games now. Just a few years later, in 1900, women were finally permitted to participate in the Olympics. 997 athletes competed that year, 22 of them were women. They had events for sailing, croquet, equestrian, golf, and tennis. Golf and tennis had women-only events while the others, women competed with men. Women's events increased slowly from there. By 1956, there were 125 men's events in the Summer Olympics and just 26 for women. The modern Olympics have been canceled a few times and only for one reason, war. In 1916, it was for World War I, and in 1940 and 1944, they were canceled for World War II. Okay, let's move on to Olympic events that no longer exist. You will remember that I mentioned earlier that women participated in croquet in 1900. Well, that was the one and only time it was an Olympic sport, exactly one spectator watched the event. I wonder how the croquet fandom is doing these days. I mean, Downton Abbey must have at least increased it a little bit. 1900 was also the year the tug of war became an Olympic event and it lasted a little bit longer than croquet, making it through the 1920 Olympics. In 1908, there was pistol dueling in the Summer Olympics. This sport was basically a faux duel in which pistols contained wax bullets and were shot at a mannequin. From 1912 through 1948, the Olympics also involved art competitions. You could win medals for art. There were five categories, architecture, literature, music, painting, and sculpture. Coubertin was also a big reason for these events. He once wrote, deprived of the aura of the art contests, Olympic games are only world championships. 
I'm pretty sure that's that's historically accurate. That's what he sounded like. And of course, there are some more common sports that were still canceled, like cricket, lacrosse, and polo. In the 1900 Paris Olympics, event winners received an engraved plaque instead of the usual medals. Let's finish up with some important years in Olympic history. In 1908, London hosted the Summer Olympics. The games lasted for 188 days, which is over half a year. Even though they were technically the Summer Olympics, events started in April and concluded on October 31st. Those same Olympics in London saw the first ever opening ceremony. It was first performed by Edward VII. And notably, the US team caused controversy when they didn't dip the flag while passing the royal box, a sentence which has retained 0% of its meaning in the 21st century. Only a few years later, we had the technology to determine race winners by looking at finish line photos. The photo finish technology was implemented for the 1912 Olympics in Stockholm. During the original Olympic Games in ancient Greece, they kept a flame burning the whole time in honor of Hestia, the goddess of the hearth, kind of like a fireplace. For the modern games, the torch made its comeback in 1928. They started the re Flame in 1936. That year it made its way from Greece to Berlin. 1936 was also the same year the Olympics were first televised. It makes a lot of sense considering that this was the year the Nazis were trying to impress the world. They had 21 cameras set up to broadcast the games. Three of them were known as television cannons. They were six feet long and shot video. Not televisions. In 1948, an English doctor named Ludwig Gutmann decided to run his own event for athletes in wheelchairs alongside the London Olympics. Nowadays, the Paralympics still meet every year. 1968 was an important year for civil rights in America. Some people thought that African American athletes should boycott the Mexico City Olympic Games in protest. Instead, many participated and won medals. During the medal ceremony for the 200 meter run, the national anthem played and two winners raised a fist in a black power salute. Jumping back in time a bit, the Winter Games have been going on since 1924 when just 16 nations competed. For a long time, the Winter and Summer Olympics were held during the same year. Then they'd both return four years later. But in 1986, there was a vote to split the Winter and Summer Olympics, like we now do. In 1992, there were Winter and Summer Olympics in the same year for the last time. The Winter Games happened in Albertville, France, and the Summer Games were in Barcelona, Spain. Finally, I return to the salon to tell you about the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, California. These were the first Olympics to be sponsored by corporations, the US government, didn't help out. A committee helped get the money together by doing things like selling exclusive TV rights to ABC for $225 million. They also enticed McDonald's and Burger King into a bidding war for sponsorship. McDonald's won and got to name the McDonald's Olympic Swim Stadium. McDonald's and swimming. An obvious pairing, if you ask me. Thanks for watching Mental Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these very nice people. Enjoy watching the Olympics this summer, and of course, don't forget to be awesome.